<laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, I made myself host, but I'm going to make you host back again because I have to be host to record so that it records and I can upload to be, uh, to YouTube. But you're good to go now. Okay, I'm good. Yeah, everybody see my screen. We good to go. Yeah, okay. absolutely. Let me set that up. Yeah. Everybody else see the screen? Yeah, 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 we can see it. Yeah, yeah, we can see it, my G. 100%. So, first of all, we're going to go over the same type of scenario that we always talk about, screener setting it up um, and how it should, should look. Um, every week, we, we, we keep talking about growth, you know, year-to-year um, -year growth, earnings growth. You want to have a percentage. But the reason this is important because you want to set it up to, uh, to your criteria. Like, what do you want when you're looking for a company? Like, what are you looking for? That's why these are uh, useful, especially once you get used to hearing, you know, the descriptive and the fundamental side of it. Then once you start getting to the technical side, then you can add that in also. But this is straight um, descriptive, de descriptive. And um, I use the P ratio under 45. I use the EPS growth <clears throat> over 5%. And I use the growth past five years over 5%. Um, I use the sales growth from quarter to quarter, high, greater than 25%. And I use return on assets over 5%. Um, no apparent reason why I did it. I was just, you know, just switching it up a little bit. I usually use like 10% on a couple of them, you know, moving it around. But I also use the earnings. I use fund, uh, uh, well, that, was, that was fundamental. This is descriptive. I use the earnings in the next five days. And I use the country United States, just something small. I'm not really going crazy. I'm not trying to, you know, you can put in dividend yield. We'll get into that later. And once they're, these dividends are going through now, you starting to see a lot of them, X dates starting to come up. So um, probably even wants to start picking back up again, I'll put in a dividend yield and a dividend date, maybe you know I me mean? on another screener that I have set up. But the first one that comes uh, that came up was foreign. And I literally just clicked on it um, just because. Right. So first thing I learned <clears throat> from just clicking on it, I automatically look at their charts and I start scrolling down. You can see that their EPS for the next five years, 20 percent EPS for the last past five years, is 28 percent. You can <clears throat> you just go round it up to like 30 um, divided by five. You get six percent. And it's an EPS for the next year, six point two or three, two percent. Um, those are important numbers. Um, I think that's a consistent growth at, you know, mid range. It's not right. Super great. We're not trying to go crazy with it, but we just looking around, um, target price is $50, 49, 43. And from there I go and find out more about the company. So after going on FinViz, seeing what they had to offer, I'm like, huh, let me go ahead and check out something else. So I go to automatically Yahoo finance. Um, then, then you start reading about what the company do. <clears throat> they do semiconductors, um, a lot of cards, car reading chips, whatever, probe chips, um, analyticals, and a lot of different things is in the semiconductor sector. And then from there, I just go to the top of my bar and I literally just start clicking over and seeing what, what Yahoo has to say about it, right? Um, in, insider sentiment, negative, hiring, you see the percentages going up. That mean they're kind of, they're getting busy. Um, <clears throat> you can scroll down, you see that they beat their earnings every time. That's one thing good, um, nice about it. But this is important right here, supply chain. Supply chain is important because they got supply chain with Intel, MU, Samsung. Those are the three biggest ones that I've seen so far. They got other ones with other companies um, in, in Taiwan and Japan. But those are the three big. We know what Intel and MU do. Obviously, we use Samsung phones. So you see that the longevity in the company is, it may be there. It may be there. And we know the semiconductor um, <clears throat> sector is picking up because of the EV cars and all types of other things. So if they're, if they're supplying these guys and these guys are supplying the EV sector, they're going to be working for a while. Now, I mean, so a lot of people say when you're doing research on companies, um, you want to get into, so if I'm an investor in MU, I want to know who MU is working with. Know what I mean? If I'm an investor in Intel, I want to know who Intel is working with. And that's when you find things like this. You can use that route also. Um, and a lot of, I know you know, I know people that look at, you know, fast food and be like, who's, who's the one supplying the fries? Who's the one supplying the burgers? Because those companies, you know, usually have be pu traded publicly. 
and it you'll get a consistency from those. You feel me? Because you know that these companies are going to be around for a long time. And as long as they're still and got contracts with them, you can just see some, some type of consistency going there. Um, and then I also got to look at their holders. Their biggest holder is BlackRock. Um, and that's always a good indicator when one of the big boys is involved, knowing that they're buying a company and that you're researching a company and you're like, oh, shoot, that's pretty cool. I love to see that. Same thing with the financials. We go to their financials. You see that they got year-to-year -year growth. They're not making a lot of super noise and revenue, but it got potential. It's young. Um, the stock price is $40.87. Um, the PE ratio is 41. That's under that 45 that I want. You feel what I'm saying? Um, their dividend. <clears throat> do they pay a dividend? I haven't paid a dividend, so that probably is probably just strictly a growth stock. But from after doing all this surface research and before I even go to the charts or anything, um, we're going to talk about the P.E. ratio. The P.E. ratio. That's a great way of indicating if a company is going to blow up after their earnings is using the P.E. ratio. Um, so where do I go? Historical conversation charts. Come down. Look. Where do I go? Right here, this uh, <clears throat> statistics. So right here, you'll see the trailing P.E. ratio is 49. Um, we know that their earnings is next week. Um, their regular P.E. ratio is 41. So if, if the trailing P.E. ratio is higher than the forward P.E. ratio, um, the regular P.E. ratio, that shows you the stock price may go down after their earnings. We could be wrong. We could be wrong. But there's a once you go back and look at some of the companies that had good earnings, and then go and look at their trailing P.E. ratio and compare it to the P.E. ratio. The trailing P.E. ratio is usually lower than the P.E. ratio. So after I looked at all that, I go to the charts. <clears throat> Automatically, I see a consistent pattern of growth from September. Um, no one really talked about this company, but if, if someone was in in September, it was $22. And you see a nice little push towards that 50 48 dollars almost 50 dollars it broke 50 dollars back on 119 which was the beginning of this month so now i'm like wow this is incredible it had a nice little push we understand why people started investing back then blackrock probably bought it in around the 29th you know i mean so let's go find that out <clears throat> yeah so blackrock bought in on the 29th of september Vanguard is right behind it. Those are like two of the biggest, you know what I mean? So, and they're holding a lot of shares of them. So most definitely, um, it seems like to me that this could be a potential good company. Now, after you do that, you also got to go to the company outlook. Oh, um, no, 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 not that sector. Where the sector at? You can go to the conversation, see what people are talking about, but you can go and find out who's the CEO, who's the chief financial officer, the, the, the top, the C's, the triple C's. Now I mean, CEO, CFO, and um, what's, yeah, just the top, the executives, the executives. Now I mean, so you come here, you check out all that. Honestly, you can Google each name. You can Google each name just to find out, you know, how they're moving, what it's looking like, um, who, what other investments they're involved in, and just get a, get a small familiarity with them. Um, and it's good to do so because if, you know, something go wrong with them, it may affect the, the company, of course. I mean, just like anything else in life, if something go wrong in, in the, the top of the household, somebody gets sick, it affects the whole household. So it's the same type of scenario when you're looking at businesses. Um, well, it's right here. I want to go see their earnings. Um, how consistent has their earnings been? Uh, we'll notice right here in October that they the price was affected by three percent so that mean it had a jump back in october um it never really stopped since then it's been pretty much moving consistent since um september so looking at their consistency they beat it every time they missed on their revenue one time um but that's okay their biggest year uh, was was in the may they had 21 million came in uh, so I see a consistent pattern on like they're making money. They're not doing extraordinarily big numbers, but they're doing good enough to be, pay attention to a little bit. <clears throat> the company that we're not even familiar with, I'm not even, you know, saying I'm going to go buy shares of them. I'm just looking around because if that price come down to a good price, though, I feel like once I, you know, do my calculations on the evaluation and that price 
actually come to like 25, 2018 below that area on a dip, I think that would be a good way to go just to look, looking at their um, consistency going into like the next five to 10 years. Um, and, and, and the sector is, is a dope sector. We know what these companies are moving like. MU was just $50 and you see where MU is at now. So that whole sector as a whole is making a whole movement towards the future. And I just, uh, and you know, anybody got questions so far? And feel free to put the questions in the chat room as well, whilst you, uh, if you've got any questions. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're a low volume company, so their options is not going to be huge. I already looked that up. Uh, I want to see some drift in between. That drift in between is very, very much good whenever you're thinking about, you know, how companies perform. This AMC, how did I get the AMC? Oh, no, that's right. Never mind. I'm tripping. This AMC. But um, yeah, <clears throat> most most definitely, uh, it's just, it's just, Whenever you go back to your screener and you see that the semiconductor area is booming, and then that also can spark you an idea again. You can just click on the actual semiconductor and then kind of do the same type of evaluation right here. And then you can look at the PE ratios and start getting familiar with it. They're, they'll give you the whole percentages, negatives or positives, of how the uh, company's performing. Hey, David, um, what's the number on your screener for sales growth quarter to quarter? What's the number on that? Like, what you mean? On the screen that you had, I think you had the sales growth growth in there. Oh, sales. The sales growth over 5% in the past five years. You can move that up. You can definitely move that up and do like over 15%. It'll cut the list a little bit shorter, but that form is still in there. That form is still in there. You can do the next five years, which, which is a speculation of like how much they should move and still do the 15% and they still in there. And the more you cut it up, you see it should cut back a little bit more. Apps is on the list. Uh, VRTX is on the list of Amazon. So for you to be in that category with Amazon with over 25%, you know, in the next five years, this is these are some good companies that we've talked about plenty of times. I mean, hopefully people made money off of apps. VR, or VRX TX is more of a smaller company. Um, they're like they're trying to, well, this is the big one. With The other one is VTRX. But this is the big boy, um, and yeah, it's definitely gonna look like it's wedging. It's gonna have to fill this gap. So this is probably gonna blow up, but it's expensive. Now you're gonna have to pay a little penny for it. And you know, I'm not trying to put you on a big price stocks right now. I'm really trying to keep it consistent with some mid caps, small caps, because if you start coming into these investments, like these, these been running, they've been running. So I don't know how much of a percentage you're gonna grab from it, but if you can find a company that you can get, you know, a hundred percent return especially during this time where, you know, everybody's new investors are coming in and a lot of different things are changing with innovation. If you can get a hundred percent return in your first year or one year, whatever, it's always good to cut back and trim down. That's why that opportunity is there. It, um, and we talked about being, you know, greedy. Once you get hold to hold shares and you're already at a hundred percent and you're still holding, that's why we talked about being greedy in certain circumstances. And, you know, in the long haul, if, you, if your prediction for, a five to 10 year hold is eight to 12%. We talked about this all the time. There's no way in the world I'm gonna still be holding a, a stock and that's over hundred percent in hold shares. I'll trim it down, put that money towards another investment with the same potential. I mean, it only makes sense, right? So um, the strategy with the whole share buying is, is very, is not complicated, but you really gotta have some type of um, restraint i mean you know some people like man leaving that forever but it's, it's cool for me to take out when they hit 100 percent and the price dip back down and now i'll throw another 50 percent that i already just made off of them back into it at the an average down on that price but you know it's, it's a lot of different ways you can do it it's a lot of different ways you can do it but you definitely have to take some money off the table especially during these times um but form to me and i haven't even sat down with it close enough but i think this can have a nice potential for a great move coming up you know what i mean because we already see it already hit 50. i mean we've seen that 52 week high I already chipped at it yeah 10 you know it's ten dollars down right now um so yeah you can probably pick up some shares and see if it start breaking above that 50 you may get more um on the or coming from this now but some of the people that bought in that 20 and below they got a lick man this was definitely a lick. It's a quiet company. Those are the ones you really want to find. 
You don't want to want to find the ones that make a lot of noise. You want the ones that's just right under the radar, flying, and not really just, you know, always out in public and making a lot of noise. Because these are the ones that grow, and you will just sit back and chill. You know what I mean? The, the, the nice little runners. But anybody else got a question? Anybody got a question? <clears throat> so... I hope you guys got um, just the notes about the P ratio. That was just a nice little way of using it on FinViz. Now we, we're going to talk about looking forward into like next week's and uh, earnings and the weeks after that. So you want to go here, go down to earnings, and we're going to go to calendar. And we're definitely going to change the date, make sure we get some time on this. Let's go, let's go look for the week of the, our contracts expire, what we was getting them. February 19th. So let's look at the week before that contract inspired. And look like they got some on the oh no, no, no. That's just yep, that's it right there. <clears throat> Coca-Cola is a big one for me on that list. Uber. Oh my goodness. This 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 may be the and the reason I'm picking out this date before that, because usually in mid-February you start seeing dips. So it'd be a good time to try to rotate off of some of the stocks. Um, especially if we like usually that's why we keep preaching get money off the table because we really don't want y'all to be caught up in them dips. You know what I mean? After the earnings or after whatever. But if you catch these run-ups before, you're already in the money, you're already taking money off the table and we're not really concerned with what happens after it. You know what I mean? So um, please be taking money off the table. Don't get too comfortable on these stocks. Unless you're going long. If you're buying whole shares, get the cheapest, get the cheapest point possible and just hold on. Don't even worry about it. If it come down, average down. And the, the thing is, we're actually in that first one there. <laughs> we're already in there. The, the, oh, yeah, yeah, we're already yeah. in the coat. Yeah, we're definitely already in the coat. And it's a slow cooker. It's not like one of the ones that's just going to shoot up automatically. It's not. It's at $48. It's been really cooking between $48 and $49. But we really need that break above $50. That'll give us our, you know, nice little run, um, nice little pickup on money, too. And it was down for a little while, too. So it seemed like it's getting ready. Um yeah, definitely look like it's going to be getting ready down here, man. This bottom support is still holding up. So it looks like it may try, try to make its move. And that's a good price point. That's discount. You know what I mean? Because we know it was just, you know, $49. But we really need to break above that $49.50. And then we'll be straight. But, yeah. So, yeah, Coca-Cola is on the list. Um, Uber is on the list. And if you're looking at Uber, you might as well be looking at Lyft. Um, that earnings date is going to be crazy. And that's the week after this one. Um, it's the 10th. So, yeah, most definitely pay attention to the earnings that's coming out. And I'm not not trying to be an earnings chaser, but we, to capitalize off of options, you need momentum, you need volume. And usually around earnings, some of these stocks get momentum, they get volume. The options contracts are having a lot of open interest, so you can capitalize off of it. Um, especially if you, you know, do your research and, you know, look around iRobot is on here. Is this the same day or is this not loading? Oh my goodness. Hold on guys. But yeah, <clears throat> anybody got anything? Y'all be having, y'all be too quiet, man. Just <laughs> Somebody talk to me. Please. Yeah, hey, it's I questions, got a question. it's questions in the chat, D. Oh, I don't. Oh, I don't see nothing. I'm up here just talking away, bro. Yeah, I'm trying to fill in the gap while you talk. I don't want to interrupt, but uh, yeah, yeah, interrupt, man. All right, I yeah. Doug was asking bullish. What does that mean? I think. Oh, bullish mean you know the stock is is rising, you know, pretty much quickly. Hold on, let me just show you an example of bullish, um, real quick. So if you change this right here. Yeah, Apple has those long weeks, man. Well, I was about to say that, bro. Like, why Apple got this long week out here, bro? I'm trying to change the time frame. It's not really giving it to me. I mean, who's buying at that price point? I don't know. It's crazy. That's how they get off of Apple. This is crazy. Uh, I just want to give a quick little bullish example just by charting. So right here, boom, bullish. Once you start seeing these big green candles coming in, I mean, the stock become bullish, and then you have a nice little run. I mean, from here to there. That's your bullish run. So basically, when this is the first day when they were talking about Proud Boys gonna buy silver, came all the way down, hit off the support 24, 
And literally, I'm not going to gas you. I just watched it. I didn't even run to it or nothing. And then it just, boom, did a nice little move. But man. I got a quick question. Um, If I can ask a quick question real quick, David. What's up, bro? All right, so on the, the candle that you just was illustrating, um, what is the technical explanation of like a candle that has like, I guess like a long, um, so for example, like, so could you put your mouse on something so I can give you some examples? Like, so, so, so you're saying like this wick coming down, you're saying like that volume is pulling the wick down or these are a lot of- Yeah, yeah, so like what is the difference between one that has like a big, a big long, you know, cylindrical square or one that just has like a small square, but it has like two lines like going all the way up or all the way, you know what I mean? Like, oh, you're uh, what, like, a, like a spinning top or like- Yeah, like what is the difference between, what does that mean? Um. Well, this is where the price open and close at from top to bottom. Green means the buyers are winning. Red means the buyers are losing. I think okay. the wick, I think this is actually sales. This is this, but they didn't win it, but they still was in there. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Some of these, the, the measure, you got to think about it like the price point for the entire day, right? You know, like Debbie was saying, um, on the left-hand side of, if you look at the wick as the middle, middle bar, right? on the left-hand side is where you open. On the mm -hmm. right is where you close. So uh, essentially, if you look at one bar, there's one line that goes in between them, right? So you open like uh, you open on the at the bottom. You close if if you close at the top. If you open at the bottom on the left hand side, if you uh, can, uh, can you zoom in more? Let me just use one of these bars to explain. I'm trying. I'm trying. Yeah, right there, right there. Yeah, just pick one. So if that red one, his mouse is on. You see okay. that he opened at around twenty four. Uh, sorry, it opened at the top because it's red. It tells you like closed lower. On the green ones, you notice it's lining between them. Just think about the left hand side. It mm -hmm. opened, then it closed at the top. It so, closed at twenty four oh one, and this one closed at the bottom at twenty three. So if it's red, it just means it closed at a lower price when it opened, and if it's green, that's it means right. It yeah, at a higher. Price. So oh, so so basically this. Let me change the thing. Right here. Yeah, this that's the one. Yeah. Scenario. So if you use this as charting, this is the same type of scenario. So if I go to like a one day chart, okay, boom. So right here, the this is the high, this is the, the green. This will probably be a green high. Yeah, that's where you open right there. Right, and that's it closed. Where it yeah. closed down here. And then you can switch it, it closed down here and then opened up here. And then Okay, I understand that. Bad, 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 bad. So it, it depends on what you're looking at. A lot of people use different things for different things, I mean. But you could change the color on this. So see how it's red? So I mean, it closed here. Yeah. You see where my line is on my little uh, marker? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. every time I go to the green, the line guide me to this because it's the top one. This is where it closed at. Got gotcha, you, got gotcha. I appreciate that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think someone asked one more question. Uh, it says iPhone, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I oh. had a question. Okay. Hey, um, Dave, so I'm, I guess I'm a little confused about, so when we, how exactly do we go about and maybe I missed it, looking at the interest and to like when we want to have those earning plays, those earnings plays, how do we go about looking to figure out what's a good one or not? Um, you can go by past earnings. You can go by what what what, what did the, the company do last year around this time? Uh -huh. a, lot, a lot of companies, you know, they're taking off a week before the earnings or the week of. And what, if you see that, don't hold your contracts to after the earnings. You know what I mean? Just you need to sell before earnings. Because usually when that price start getting spikes, those are the um, day traders, swing traders coming in there interrupting. But whenever you see one that spike after the earnings, that, they, they usually have a low float, uh, low float of shares. So once you see that notice, the low float, dang, it's so many examples, man, because it's like, hold on, let me show you. Hold on. So let me just type in, let me type in zone. Cause sometimes they have the low floating shares and then it'll have a huge spike for earnings and it'll be crazy. But let me show you right here. Uh, let me see. Which one did I use? I think historical data, no chart. No, that's not it either, summary. Where my chart? It's like one, oh, volatility, I think this is it. Okay, boom. So right here. <clears throat> so if I go back to, let me see. And this is about to get a little bit, you know, technical. <laughs> but yeah, do you see the earnings history, right? So notice uh -huh. 
from from this area here, which is J uh, July all the way to the up to the earnings, the thirty first, it had a nice little run. Now I mean, so if I pull back, this is the March. I really don't want that. I want the date that we played. I think it was right. And it's the right one. Yeah, this song. Yeah, I think it's like it had to be this one. So this had a huge spike. Um, and you can't really see it in this, but you can see like a little movement from it. So this after the earnings had that little spike right here. You see the volume is coming in super high. Um, and this is for contracts, this options, this options, uh -huh. right? Um, you come down here, you'll see the volume overall uh, with the moving averages or historical price. So right almost at that same date time, look at that spike it had. But notice before then the, the price was kind of if I if I can zoom I can kind of chart it for you I'll go back on the big chart and show you, but it, you can see right here that it was like almost at a right below that line right below that line you feel what I'm saying so that means the price is just chilling then it had a huge spike and then from there after this sell off right here this is basically the day trader swing traders you could have got back and zoom at this dip and then it just rolled it all the way up till it hit I think it hit five eighty. Now, I'm about, and that's just showing you from this mm -hmm. price. And then I'm going to show you, this is from option value. This is historical price. Now let's go to the chart and kind of fit it in with, you know, create a picture. So right here, and this is Zoom. The reason I'm using Zoom, it was kind of, it was, it was kind of one of the better jumps that I've seen. Um, it's a lot of them that did it, but this was pretty much a dope jump. So let's pull it out. I need to change my time frame because... It's gonna get a little messy. Uh, so right here, and that's my down channel I created once it took the spike. So let's pull it back right here. So this right here is this big spike, and it almost looked exactly like what I just showed you—a little dip, but stay below a, a certain resistance line. Now I mean, so it, it, I gotta add more time, which I'm gonna show you right now. And put, put a big line just to make it huge. Um, so right here. Oh shoot. And it, it all matches up once you lay it out. Now I mean you will see it. You'll be like, oh shoot, that's crazy. So let me see. So boom. Notice how zoom, and I'm just using these. These these little thresholds right here. I'm gonna start from right there. I think that's the best way to do it because this this is the true resistance, and then that's the breakout above it right there. So you see at that 281, it kept testing that. It tested it two months before the earnings. So the price was below 281 before earnings. The highest point before earnings was you know the week before earnings was 281. So if you would have tracked it and just followed it down, and then it found some good support right here. So let's put the close line there. It found some good support there at two two twenty nine. So it's basically it was once it cracked two twenty nine, which you can tell from right here. Um, this is June. It cracked two twenty nine. That becomes support. You notice it comes right here to the support because you know you know it was fighting it because it came right here twice. Boop boop, and then you see the support. It hit it three times on this one. Now, I mean, this is a triple top. So one, two, three. As soon as it broke above this, it did a full gap up. A full gap up. Now, look all that volume that's coming in. Look all that. You know, this is volume. This is volume. It's, it's huge. <clears throat> once you just see a gap up, what I tell y'all, the gap got to be filled. So once that sell off came and the price came to three fifty, that you could you could have just bought Zoom and just held it. You know, until it hit five hundred and sixty dollars automatically. Now, as soon as it came down and broke out the uptrend because if i put a line here I'll, you'll notice an uptrend from it um right here and i don't want to put a lot on my screen and make a few of you guys but i'm going to keep changing the colors uh, try to help out a little bit as soon as it broke the uptrend it became bearish so whoever was asking about the bullish and the bearish this is bullish this is bullish these candles are bullish this is the one day um, chart year to date and you see the solid green coming in and the huge gap up. This is bullish. It rolled off the trend line, bam, bam, bam. Once it breaks that trend line here, it's automatically, to me in my mind, it's bearish. It's automatically bearish to me in my mind. You feel me? Because it, 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 from time, think about this, from eight 
all the way to two months, basically. It was riding the trend line. It was riding up trend line. So you tell me if it breaks it after two months, you, you think it's going to go back up above that? Nah, it didn't. It went and tested it and came right on down. So that's when you make your down channel, down channel. And this is how you know it's going to probably be bullish again. It broke out of the down trend line. It broke out of the down trend line. So now Zoom is looking like it's going to try to go and stay above 378. As soon as it do, you'll start seeing bullish come, um, formation come in and you can add your little lines. You can ride it right back up. Quick question, D. What's, what's up, bro? Um, when you're checking out earnings, like does, does every, I mean, every company doesn't have the same earnings uh, date, does it? Oh yeah, a lot of companies be on the same day. It be it'd so. Be, how do you how do you check when a company's earnings uh, date is? They got an earnings calendar. Depend on what um, platform you're using. I will suggest TD because TD have a lot of information. But I, this is Market Chameleon. This I look on Market Chameleon. I can just go to date by date, and this is the amount of earnings on that same date. And I can just click through it and just you know find what I want. Um, find usually fire companies I'm already familiar with because it's it's easier for you to you know predict what it's going to do, especially coming out for Christmas buys and you know what just happened during the holidays and then right right right. You know. um, also, you can come here to um, Yahoo Finance, uh, click here, and then you'll go to markets. And they'll set it up almost the exact same way. You'll see earnings here, stock splits, IPO pricing, uh, 59 economic events. And you can just, you could click, go by events. A lot of people just click on events and then you'll see the events that's going on. And then you just, you know what I mean? Mm, gotcha. Fit yeah. it in, get in where you fit in. Um, but yeah, you can click on here, click on earnings. It's 200 you, earnings on- So more earnings coming daily? Uh, no, these be pre-predicted. So you can have these earnings, you know, these dates, you know, last year, December, they should have been started announcing. Mm. So so ATVI, EA Sports, usually like the ones that's kind of familiar with each other, they be on the same weeks most of the time. Uh, mm. Same weeks, I ain't say same days. So, you know, they may be spaced out a little bit, but AccuVision coming up next week. I know EA Sports next week. So you, you may start getting spikes in these. Um, you notice that right here, it took a big jump in, in, in November. Uh, I think that's when we, we still was playing off them 85s. We had some 85 calls so long ago. But yeah, it, it gapped down here and you start seeing that retest. And if it holds above $90, which is at 91, yeah, you may see that 95, you know what I mean, before earnings. And then once that money come in for what they did for Christmas, you may see $100. But accuracy business uh, AccuVision EA Sports Take Two Active we like those <clears throat> anybody else yeah um how y'all doing today what's up can you uh I am into I'm in GM and TAK can you look at them for me GAK TAK yes I know that was a call that you guys put out as well, but I was in, in there beforehand. But just to look at that, that'd be great. Yes, ma'am. And if y'all got some, y'all playlist with y'all, man, y'all know what time it is. We got like 15 minutes. So I definitely want to answer some questions on what y'all looking at. So you notice GM broke all the way out. Uh, they had some great news coming out with their EV stuff. <clears throat> if you're already in it, you know, it may it may hit that 20, uh, 48, 21. You know, I mean, you see a couple gaps down here that may have to be touched on. So it may come as low as 45, 83. And we know you got to average down if it's a hold above that area. But if it breaks below, you know, we'll just have to wait to the bottom or either maneuver out the position. But if you got time, always look at your contract. Make sure you got some time on that. Hey, what does average down mean? Buy more. Buy more shares. Once Thank the you. price get down... To a certain area so say if you buy something for 10 they come down to five you buy more your average would be you know 7.5 you, you really thank want to you. buy more than what you purchased the first time thank you thank you thank you yeah you cool bro there's a lot of new people um tech so it looked like I ain't do no charting on them. Well, did we call an option on this? There you go. Yeah, you guys did. 
I believe he did. Yeah, Dave, that's. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. okay. Yeah. Art. yeah, that's art. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. You're right. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, we are. 2022s. Yeah, we hold yeah. those. <laughs> Still great on that one. We, we call them 2022s. <laughs> so I didn't. So I got in it before I seen your call for 22, right. for the 22 place. I was in it um, already. So that's why. I, oh, yeah. Most <laughs> was, yeah, most definitely. Look like, you know, it's a lot of gaps in. I hate seeing all these gaps. I'm not going to get right. it. But um, they got good news surrounding them, and Ark can keep buying more every time they dip. So, yeah, no, that's a loop play. That Lou be putting out that Ark. Yeah, Ark like uh, they they got 1.2 million shares of attack uh, right now. Oh, yeah, they do. Yeah. <laughs> I know yeah. they had a lot. Seeing that they yeah. were, um, had invested um, in them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I see a lot of. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. a lot of news. Ark been making some moves lately, man, and they getting in early. You know, you know they tired. Yeah. They going long. You know they going long. So, yeah. One one quick thing about this company is a Japanese company, and I think they're trying to get. Uh, I don't know if it's Moderna or Novavax uh, vaccine. So they, I think Japan has not approved uh, Moderna yet. So they're trying to partner with uh, one of the American companies, I think, to kind of pro uh, produce their COVID nineteen vaccine. Uh, they're doing a lot of research right now. So I think ARC is just trying to get in before everybody else. Uh, once they, they, they're expecting, once they approve it, um, maybe this, this is going to rocket. Or maybe, they, you, know, maybe, you know, maybe they know something else we don't know. But uh, that's the only news I saw about this uh, uh, Takeda or Takeda, whatever the name is. Yeah, yeah, Takeda. Pharmaceuticals. I have a question. What's up? Um, I was actually looking into uh, SINs and ACRX, but I hadn't gotten a chance to look any deeper for long term for long term holds. Sensonomics, S E N S. Yeah. Oh, you know, I mean, they picked up too. They may yeah, up they've up. been kind of holding steady even throughout all this been going on. So, so if you're if you're getting into technicals, uh, if you're learning how to do technicals, yeah, this is a technique that you can see like if it's you know it's going to squeeze or have a pendant or a wedge, um, you can do something like this. You can basically set up your chart and then pull back your. You know, I mean, don't be scared to pull back high. Just look at it from a distance. Then you'll uh -huh. notice, you'll notice a triangle. You know what I mean? And once you put that triangle in there, it gives you an indicator of like, okay, maybe if it busts out of this triangle, I may have something. You know what I mean? Okay. So it's a whole book on charting, and they'll teach you how to do this, these type of triangles and, and wedges and, you know, trend lines. And um, this is when the price is, you know, is one, one side is not beating another when you start seeing this. They're basically breaking even. Um, and then once... Once it breaks out, that means the, the buyer's one. If it breaks out of this upwards, that means the buyer's one. If it break lot break out down, that means the shorters, you know, they're in there. But if the quality of the company is there and you want to hold it for a long term, buy it at a cheaper price and just hold on. You feel me? It doesn't matter what they're doing. Now, okay. I mean, it definitely don't matter what they're doing. But if you're trying to do something short term just to make some money. Use your chart, use your support and resistance. Um, notice these type of wedge plays and notice if the price breaks out or break down. You know what I mean? So, should, so I would wait until um, it goes either way? Yeah. Uh, if it, if okay. it breaks up, it has to hold above $7.76 or it got to hold above, uh, two, no, not seven dollars sorry, $2.76 or hold above $2.44. So yes, you definitely, I mean, that's my suggestion is just chill. Um, if it breaks, you know, this wedge and it may do a fake out, it may start coming back down again. That means you could have got it for a cheaper price. You could have got it at, you know, $2 and, and eight, and what's the 82, $1 82 cents. And we noticed that was a hard resistance. That was a hard resistance area. Cause look at the fight over here. It yeah. Really, you know, break above and hold until they got down from hitting off this support area again. Um, and almost all support and resistance has kind of looked the same after a while. You'll see a fight here, a little breakout here with the fake out. And then at, more than likely if somebody bought here, they average down here and then it, it, it finally took off. So averaging down is a great method of, you know, getting some of your money and jump, just being into the money a little bit earlier. 
Right. And, and that's when that breakout happened. And if you was a good trader or if you was consistent at staring at charts, you would have noticed that, you know, it hit, hit the support area here, which is basically the top of the old resistance fight that they had over here. So basically, if you put that line, let me show you. So if I put a line around, then yeah, say right, right there. And then you zoom in, you'll notice that that's kind of like the same area was fighting over here. I mean, so that's a good support area too. It's a short term support. So boom, it popped right up. And that's when people make money, you know, off of it again, because once it got above that resistance again, it kind of held right below it. And if I put another line, you'll notice that I'll probably be a, a little support right here. Know what I mean, and then <clears throat> What's that lower line? That's 212. Yeah, hold on. Let me see. You're talking about the one I was just on? Yeah. That was 264. The one at oh. the bottom where I just put in, um, that yeah, yeah, yeah. is, that's two, 199. 199. That basically $2. You know what I mean? And that's how you set those up. That's how you take advantage of it. Um, <laughs> one stock keep playing over and over because usually they run in the same way. Like BlackBerry had the same type of setup. It spiked at 942, came down to seven. The next day hit 865, came down to like 715. Automatically, I'm like, oh, it's wedging because it was higher lows. Mm. Um, and the, high, the highs are coming lower. So automatically, I already, I already played the, seven, the, eight, the 850 call back up. But now I'm like, okay, I know it's going to go down to seven. I mean, if it didn't hold the midpoint, come down to seven. And from there, you can automatically gauge where it was tightening up at, and then they exploded up, did a fake out, came all the way back down to 650. And then that's when you see this huge explosion just happen off their momentum that they added to it. So if you hmm. want to, I'll show you what it I'll show you what it looked like. I'm not just talking. And the numbers, <laughs> you know what I mean? I'll show you what it looked like. Cause you can all the stocks got the same type of scenario. You know what I mean, all the stocks got the same type of scenario. So <clears throat> So where we was at? This is this month. Let's pull it all the way back. Yeah, there we go. And this is how long I've been messing with it. But and they already messed up my chart. Yahoo don't last that long. The memory don't last that long. <laughs> they definitely messed my chart up. Uh, let me see where that first spike at. Nope, that's too far. Way too far. Oh, there you go, right here. So th this is your spot. And it had a huge gap up. What date is that? 2-1, 12-1. So change this, go to like a 30 minute, scroll back over to 12-1. And it seemed like it's a lot, man, because it's just, you know, being consistent, man, it's crazy. Once you just stay on top of it, you'll start seeing it. And you'll be like, oh, that's dope. This that dip I'll tell you about to 650, it hits 654. And then here go that little wedge up here. And they messed my whole chart up. I need some more time. Give me three months. Dang, bro. It seemed like it's, it seems like it's just a lot of lines too. You just be staring at me like, dang, it's just a lot of lines. Like, bro, it's just, it's a lot of information. A lot of lines. It's a, it's a lot of information. And a lot of people like to clear it out. And then, you know, I like to keep my stuff. I did a lot of stuff. <laughs> I've been doing this for so long, man. Like, come on, man. I had to keep my little picture. But they may not even give it to me because of that. So this is bootleg. Yeah, they're not giving it to me, bro. But you see the dip right here, and this is my wedge area. They definitely not giving it to me. I hate it. I clear it out. Forget it. Matter of fact, hold up. I know I got pictures of it. I'm tripping. Let me go. I'll be saving my pictures. Anybody got a question where I go find these pictures real quick and I'm gonna pull it up for you? Yeah, David. Um, I have a question. Yes, sir. Uh, in all of the meetings, or most of the meetings, I uh, hear you use the word um, uh, resistance and uh, support. Like on the graph, how can I really um, identify? I know someone answered me earlier in yeah. the text, but like, how can I really look at the chart and say, okay, this is the support right here and the resistance? Okay. Um, so basically, what you do is you go to the bigger time frames. You want to use big time frames whenever you're looking for support resistance. And all you want to do is to just catch the tips 
on the downside and the tips on the bottom. So they but they come to peaks like triangles. So you can catch the tips on both sides. And then that'll, that'll let you know, I mean, with the support and resistance areas. So, man, they're not even, I didn't even save my little pictures. Dang, this is the worst day. All that work, bro. So, look, so right here, you go back to the week. Um, and this is this is a long time ago. So, you know what I mean, this is 2018. But you could take you could take 2018 and still put your support and resistances in. You could start from here. You know what I mean? So you could put your line. So say if you have your line here, and I can do it by eye. So on the top, you do the top closing line. I mean, like if you pull it here, pull it up a little bit, you can use that almost. And then you'll see a touch above these areas and you'll see how that line is showing up here. That's touching there, it's holding up here. That's the same type of scenario. So every time you see a peak on the way down or the way up, just put just put a line there. And then you'll you'll start it start telling the story. It'll start giving you, you know, something to look at. Okay, okay. Yeah, most definitely. But you notice that bottom support was so strong at six dollars. Uh, and this is still Blackberry. And then that's when you start seeing those spikes. This that first spike right here. So, but the, the support and resistance last forever. Don't really change. You can just keep using it from past dates and whatever. And that's the the, the dopest thing about it is that you know sometimes like Ford, we can pull back and find the resistance from years ago, and it'll still be this almost the same exact resistance area. And then once it breaks above that, you know, it haven't been, a, oh, the first thing click in my mind is this price haven't been above this area in so long. You know what I mean, like in years. And then I'm automatically trying to figure out how, how I'll be able to make money off of it. So, um, David, so what's the term given when um, it breaks above uh, resistance? Like, what is it? <laughs> um, so if it breaks above a long-term resistance, that means that it's gonna probably hold above that area for a long, long amount of time. It's a good chance. You know what I mean, it's, it's not saying that's gonna hold above that area right now, but let's just say like in a week's term, if it stays above this area for a week, it's gonna be able to hold above the area. And that's why I say when it breaks, that means that if I put this resistance line at twenty four dollars and ninety five cents, or I put it at what point this is seventeen dollars and ninety eight cents for BlackBerry. If it breaks above seventeen dollars and hold, which means a solid green candle come in on a fifteen minute or a thirty minute time frame, two of them actually. Once you see two of them, um, that means that's kind of holding pretty good. Like notice right here, it didn't really give me a, a solid one. It gave me like one, and then it broke below again. Gave me one, but they give me another one here. This it wasn't next to each other, kind of a fake out. Um, gave me another resistance here, came back down. Now you got a bullish engulfing. Now you had a little gap up. Now, I mean, you can see, you st you'll start seeing it once you start getting used to seeing the candles after the support and resistance. But as long as you start watching and see, you know, what type of candle is holding above what area, um, you'll be fine. It'll definitely start coming to you a little more easier. But just co being consistent, looking at the charts, setting up support and resistances on the bottom levels. Um, the reason I put this one here, because you notice these prices is tapping out one boop, 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 boop. So look, that's a good support. You know what I mean? Because it's holding above it. You know what I mean? And that's a one hour chart. So that showed me for one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hours, it was above $13.73. Okay, man. All right. I appreciate it, man. I'm yes, going to look more into it on my own and see if I can start identifying these stuff. Oh uh, no, no, and just and and what and the reason that this is useful because then you can start talking about setting alerts. Start going to your phone, setting alerts towards support areas, so you ain't got to stare at it so much. That's what you know the advantage of of this is because you can come in like oh, I'm gonna set alert towards 1376. If it breaks below that area, if you want to buy it below that area, you'll just come and look at it and be like, oh, it's still coming down. I may get a better discount. I mean, it may come down to another support area. And that's what basically you do whenever you're having your phone or you're doing your research. You go to each one that you're familiar with, establish support and resistances. Um, notice that a trend line break. This did has that did a, it did do a trend line break um, right here. 
so you know you can you can add that in there notice it breaks so it may break now furthermore or it may pop back up sometimes they pop back up get back on top of the trend line and keep moving like a lot of stocks does that but it's just I tell people, man, it's hard to predict, man, because once that volume start hitting in, you know, these stocks, we've seen stocks go from zero to 100 real quick. So that's the thing. Now, I mean, being there when it's down here, buying it at the cheaper price. Now, I mean, especially if you believe into it, you know, for a couple six month hold, one year hold until you make 100 percent. So, yeah. Um. So, for example, like um, Shell. Can can you help me identify the support and resistance? Uh, oh, which one? Shell. What's the, what's the letters? I think it's. Uh, give me one second. Let me look again. Uh, you may can type it in, bro, if you want. I think I can. I think I. No, no, I ain't got my chat. Where my little screen at? Um, it's S H L X. S H L X. 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 S H L X. As an X ray. H L X. Okay. <clears throat> so you come here. The first thing I do, I pull it out just to give me a view. I want to see what it looked like. You feel what I'm saying? So with these flat areas, these are good support areas. Whenever you see these flat areas on the top, you see how that line go across there? I didn't even put a line up and I automatically can see it because it just looked like, you know, it looked like a cup and handle kind of charter form. But um, so right here, change this color. So this is your resistance at $11.74. Um, you got a bottom support. I think I see a little something right there at eleven dollars and sixteen cents. That was a hard resistance back over here. So that's yeah. If you want to go further down, further than that, you can come down to ten dollars and eighty one cents. And if you want to go further than that, you can go to this. I think this the strongest support is ten dollars and seventeen cents because that's where it was fighting at a lot. And the reason I put it above this area because it found that it's a, a flat surface here. I think that was more of a hard resistance. You know what I mean, okay. Yeah, I was just looking at it um, yesterday. You know, I remember you telling us. You know, looking at some of the the products that we buy or wear or use. Yes, sir. So I got some fuel at Shell yesterday. I was like, oh, let me look into this. <laughs> yeah, that's smart. That's smart. <laughs> Definitely a route you want to go is get familiar with things that surround you first and then start venturing out, taking your time and finding stocks that you're not familiar with. They look like they're super profitable. I mean, they make some money like a mud. They missed their earnings a couple of times, but yeah. Yeah, you definitely look like, I mean, they got a couple of little revenue pickup. But yeah, yeah, most definitely look, look around, man. See what you can see. Because I think people jump into the game and try to get familiar with things they have nothing and they know nothing about at all and then be lost. And that's where, you know, it gets kind of tricky, especially when, you know, we, we can we could talk about GameStop and AMC forever. But the only thing I'm going to tell you all is I'm buying puts. <laughs> and that's I mean, because there's no way in the world. No way in the world that these companies is going to hold that long that high. If you, either these institutions going to sell off or everybody going to start taking profit regardless because they're not quality businesses. Is it they're not? And it's and they're not even operating at a high capacity right now like and it's going to be bad for whoever is just like I really believe they're going to hit a thousand. If that thing start coming down, man, it's going to get ugly, man. Cuz these big time institution holders that came in at $6, you know, $10, $15 Man, they're going to they gonna be like, man, why am I still holding? And they're going to start selling. It's going to be crazy. And, 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 not to, and not to just jump in, but um, and a put is when you're predicting the, the strike to go down, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Whenever you think the stock goes up. And what's crazy about it is, man, the, the, the people that's in it, 
that's I'm telling y'all, the people that's doing it or pushing the stock up, I bet you they buy puts. I bet, <laughs> I bet you, I bet you they buy puts. <laughs> and whoever out here buying whole shares, man. Ooh. But wasn't it um something about like the um the investor <laughs> that is shorting like it um uh, it expires on Monday or something like that? Yeah, and they, then they have to sell off. They have to sell off and buy the stock. On and that's what that's what they're anticipating is that right. because right. the investors have to sell off on Monday, they're going to be forced to, and that's going to push it up to a thousand. Right. So 100%. yeah. So so basically, the people that were shorting, they got to buy the shares, right? What about the people that's already holding the shares at fifteen dollars? It's a whole I mean, list of them. We can right. bad. It's gonna be bad. It's gonna yeah. be real bad. And I, well, if you're smart, you're gonna take profit once. You know what I mean? Right. You're gonna if take it, profit. If right. you're smart, you will take profit once they hit a certain point, and then you're right. You put in puts because it it might not go down like all the way back down to like forty or thirty. Right. It may and may not, but either way, you should put in puts after that. Yeah, yeah, and this this dude Cohen, I mean, he's like they said, hundred percent owner. The you know, footnote, you know what I mean? Look, I don't know how much he feel like he want to be an owner right now. I will sell all of mine because, like, dude, you getting look how much of your of return you're getting, bro. Like, they gotta have some type of deal. They got to, because if he's still holding and his his entry price was nothing but like seven fifteen dollars, man, that's I mean that's crazy. Damn. You would really believe in GameStop for real, for real, like. Or they got a deal, or they got some type of deal. You know what I mean, but look at these executives, directors. You know what I mean, look at all of them. How many shares they're holding? You know what I mean, at what price range? This four dollars, five dollars. Man, you don't think some of these people gonna get off of these stocks? You know what I mean, they got to file for the SEC to be able to sell. But still, like, bro, it's gonna be crazy. And these and these are the dummies that sold beforehand. This dude sold on the fifteenth. I don't know who he, who he is. He I don't know what he was thinking. But but he holds shares of all of these companies. He sold his GameStop shares. Oh, he sold again at three. Oh, look. Did he? Oh, no, he bought. He bought them in? Hold up. Oh, no, no, no. He's still holding. He's still holding more shares. So he sold some shares here, and then he's still holding these right here. But that's crazy. That's crazy. Man, that's absolutely crazy, man. Yeah. Right. Oh, wow. <laughs> he got it. Yeah, he got it, man. He got it. Even though he sold all these shares right here, he she traded it at you know thirty six dollars. He was selling them, so he made a little come up. But oh, he's sold recently. That's this year. That somebody just say that. That was January fifteenth, fourteenth, and thirteenth. He sold at thirty three dollars. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah, he probably pissed right now. But he probably don't care either. He probably like, oh, I still got these. Yeah, so he definitely. I don't know. I think he bought them and sold them all. Let's let's see. Let me see. Thousand shares, three hundred. What's the total here? Let me do the math. Yeah, this, I think he sold all his whole position, bro. But but that right there, <laughs> if I if I understand correctly, he sold them earlier at thirty six dollars and forty dollars. But he went again and buy he them for four hundred sixteen dollars. No, no, he bought them at five dollars and seven cents. So he bought them at good prices. Like he bought nine thousand. Almost eleven thousand shares right here. Eleven, like eleven fifty right here. He bought all these shares up, um, which was a total of twenty four thousand dollars. He sold at forty dollars thirty eight and thirty six around. You know, multiple times he just kept trimming off. Once he hit thirty, he started trimming off. I mean, once he hit forty, he trimmed off some more. Once he seen that little pullback, he trimmed off at thirty eight because he probably thought the stock price was going to dump. Know what I mean, but. If he would have held on, dude, he would have flipped a twenty-four thousand dollar investment to millions. You know, he still made money. He made great money. Like he made one hundred forty thousand on that sale, two hundred thousand on that sale, five hundred thousand on that sale. Like he made great money. He made a million doing. You know what I mean? He still made a million. There ain't no telling how many shares he had. Like it's crazy. If you say add all these up, he had to have shares before um, he bought more. But, and that's the thing and that's what people don't realize man like no matter how many options the, the re reason these folks getting paid because they got options but the people that got whole shares that just started jumping in at $400 man man it's going to be crazy yeah I hope it goes to a thousand I hope it goes to a thousand because if man if these guys start selling bro it's going to be ugly man 
It's gonna be ugly. Hey David. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. How do you how are you how do you uh determine the dates for the puts? Um, volume. Go and find out who got the highest volume. So okay. I, think, I think that April has a lot of open interest in volume. Right here, it got two hundred thirty thousand. I mean, two hundred three thousand. March mm -hmm. actually got more than them, but I want a little bit more time because I think you know March may, you know, it started dipping, but I want that full dip. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that dip, I dip, you dip. That's what the dip. <laughs> I want that. I mean, for real, because if uh, think about that, look, look at the option volume. They got volume on the one dollar put. Like, how is that possible? Wait, so did you did you get um you bought a put already? Or no, 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 no. I'm waiting. I'm waiting on Monday. I'm waiting on Monday. Okay. Yeah. Monday. The, okay. Dude, they got fifth. They got volume and over interest on the fifty cent put, the one dollar put. Like, bruh. Dang, <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna yeah. have to get in there. Right, because, you, because this is what people don't understand with these options. No matter what, you could be way out the money. As long as that price keep coming down, you straight. True. You straight. You're going to get a piece of the pie. You may not get the whole pie. I'm coming up. Like Honestly, I was thinking about because the price range. I mean, if I go here, let me show you how the price range real quick. It's, it's here coming across the floor. Mm -hmm. so, so right here, here go the price range for these. These are cheap, man. These are set seventy three dollar puts all the way for April, like four 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 dollars, two dollars for a two dollar put. Like, bro, come on, man. These these gonna be crazy. These are gonna be crazy, man. Uh, what this one hundred forty three dollars, and that's a two hundred sixty dollar put. That's not that's not out of range, you know. That's money. But like, man, it's gonna be ugly, man. It's gonna be real ugly. And, and it's, the, the calls got volume too, but dude, there's no way that price is gonna hold like that. Cause them guys that sitting up there with these thousand shares, they're gonna get rid of them. There's no way in the world, like they'll be fools not to. Think about how much money that would be. That's crazy. But yeah, look at that volume, man. 50 cent put cost a dollar, two dollars. You know what I mean? It's just cheap. Anybody else? Uh, yeah, David. One last one. Um, K N X. Um, K N X as an X ray. Yeah. I used to drive for that company before I started working for myself, but you know, yes, I wanted sir. to look into that one. Yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm trying to identify the um the 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 resistance and support. Yes, sir. I got you on that. Oh my goodness. And I appreciate y'all joining for real big time, man. Um, it had a gap down too, bro. So this may have a chance to come back to 43.35. But as far as support and resistance, you notice it broke out the trend line too. So it may have a little bit more downside. And that's a big one. Let me pull it up a little bit. Yeah, that's cool right there. Anybody else got anything? Yeah, I got my CLF again. I, yeah. I just don't know. <laughs> I, I, you know what? And I did it on a hundred dollar challenge yeah. or whatever. So I, I, it was up, and I didn't take profit. That was my fault on that one. That's that's going down. But I know how it. You know what I'm saying? I know how it weighs or whatever. Yeah, yeah, how it moves. So I'm hoping it's going on his come up. Yeah. Uh, the support level on that is 39.50. The resistance is 41.02 and 42.55. But it got a gap right here at the 43.37 all the way up to the 44.02. So, yeah, it should be able to hopefully go back up and test. But it may have a lot of downside, man. You may get at a discount. Uh, 37. Look around 37 or 38.67. But yeah, man, I appreciate y'all joining big time, man. It was pretty cool. I'll be nervous sometime, man. Y'all can probably tell. But I'm getting used to it. I'm getting comfortable. <laughs> These Sunday sessions are a little different, especially by giving out techniques and, you know, looking at things a little differently. Um, I have a different eye for different things. So hopefully you guys can figure out your technique. Make sure you use the tools that's in front of you, man, because once you start learning this stuff, you'll be able to just, every dip, you'll automatically know what to do. 
you automatically know what to do, man. I'm looking at them for Monday too. AC, uh, TC, that a huge spike. I think I caught it on that day when it ran up 72 percent um, back on the 12th. But now it's looking like it's kind of settling down back off of the 2235. So it looks like it may do another push and like it's about to get ready. So I'm definitely looking at them again. <clears throat> Try to make a uh, make a couple of dollars off of there. All right, y'all. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all big time. See y'all in the morning. Um, be careful. Tread. All right, man. Appreciate it. 100%. Y'all tread lightly, man. Don't be out here jumping off the porch. Uh -oh. <laughs> nah, I'll, I'll, be, I'll be up at 4 a.m. in the morning looking at the markets. 100%. And uh, notice that the Dow Jones finally broke its uptrend. And that's a huge, a huge situation. The Dow, Dow Jones broke his uptrend. <clears throat> So I mean, you may, we may be looking at some downside. You feel me? Notice right here on the one week chart that Dow Jones broke that uptrend line. You feel me? That's important. That's a very, very important step right there. So you may see a little downside. Hopefully we can cash in, make some money before the rest of them follow suit because they usually all follow suit with each other. But yeah, be careful. I'm expecting a good dip in March or at least midway February, like Ken said. So blessings. Y'all holler at me. All right, man. All right.